Yeah, thank you for the question. <laughs> I'm Shankar Oja. I'm CEO of QHRM. And QHRM in Myanmar for the last five years. And we have been uh, servicing about 135 customers right now. And have about 35,000 user base who are using our software. Yeah, very good question. Um, see, uh, HR software is not just about HR. So think a little bit deeper. Who runs your company as an entrepreneur? You are not running your company. It's your people, those who are running your company. And it is a paramount importance for organization to take care of their employee with their work-life balance and then uh, their you know, daily uh, management within the organization. And doing that manually is a laborious job. And not only laborious job, it, it doesn't give you a statistical data for a future use. So what we provide is a tool wherein you will be able to record all of your HR activities in the system. System is connected to the powerful data uh, engines at the back end and also uh, connected to the data mining engine. So let's say if you start using QHRM for three years, and at the end of three years, I will be able to produce reports which you cannot even imagine. So I can tell you what is happening in your organization sitting here looking at your data. And that is something empowering our management to take a right decision. So what are right decision in terms of when I say QHRM is who, who are my people that I have to preserve? Who is my, let's say my CEO resigns or let's say my operation manager resigns, who is going to succeed them? and how equipped that person is, is something that you can do in our succession management. Similarly, uh, you know, most of the companies, if you are doing manually, performance management is a gut feeling thing. So if, if, if you are my manager and if you like me, you'll give me a good uh, increment. If you don't like me, you might do whatever you want, right? So what we facilitate through our software is give you a data based decision making not gut feeling based and that itself is a, such a big thing that uh, you know we are bringing to the companies on top of that you know compliance especially related to payroll leave uh, leave rules connected to government and various other things are again you no know, manual things if you do it manually it's a laborious job so we have automated that every module inside qhrm is connected to the in-house AI or outside. So it helps uh, essentially why you should have is do, if you want to succeed in your company, your people are your key and we, we help you manage your people. So it is pretty much important for you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, no, so, so it's been five years, seven years, previous two years, something else, other business for ERP. So, QHRM is for five years. No, nothing has changed. When I, uh, when I see Myanmar seven years back, and I see as a you know, golden opportunity for tech companies like us. And uh, if, you, if I go short, mission is to automate your HR processes. Everybody talks about save environment, save trees. How, how are you going to do it? We have a, with that mission at the core. If I can automate only your HR related needs. We are saving tons of tree every year. So mission is to automate Myanmar market, Myanmar HR industry. And the way I see, the way we envisioned five years back is still there. Everybody using paperless organization where we are contributing to society positively. Yeah, that's, that's how the business. Yeah, so yes, there are many. There are people who are competing. There are people who are copying us. <laughs> um, how we are different? Very important question. First of all, uh, our software is not uh, based on the philosophy that we want to make a lot of money out of it or, you know, just go to the market, make some client and do something. The, the Or as I told you, vision is to service the people of Myanmar and that is through giving the work-life balance plus automating other things. While we are thinking about these things in our mind, back of our mind is how we can become a 
you know center of excellence with our current system so that that if that let us think that okay if we do one thing two thing three thing still my customer have to think for many other things as a hr need hr operation needs so the way we are different it is anything and everything you think from sourcing to separation is in one one central you know software second thing is a software uh, support team many some companies are just selling software here they have a support team abroad they can't understand burmese uh, nuance local lo local know how i have a solid on ground team here who supports my customer on to a 2 minute turn around basis so now tell me which company provides 2 minute tat if you if you are my customer and if you ask something my team will reply in 2 minute so that is service wise we are superior product wise i uh, i want you to try one day <laughs> yourself also free of cost will give you a trial uh, product is not developed as a techy product is developed with the help of the hr people at the back they are people those who are doing deep research in hr industry hr professionals hr managers recruiters performance evaluator these people come up with the feedback and we develop that as as good as we can uh, you know copy their mind into our software that is why we are totally different compared to our other competitor here answering that will take a lot of time but i'll try to summarize for you <laughs> okay so thanks to covid now we have a mixed work culture many people don't even go, thinking of going to office they are used to work from home and delivering the output as required by company so i see that this trend will continue for a long time it is not uh, that you know now even as a company we are also thinking that if we can have a people working from home it's wonderful for us and it is flexible for them so something like working mom uh, this is a really the covid happened for working mom i think <laughs> it's like that second thing is um, skill based hiring gone are days when you you have you know okay we hire we hire a generic person and then we will try to train them and make them out of it is going to go out of the things if you have one particular skill requirement you will try to find a skill person on that thing and it may be for a short term uh, organizations will differ from having a long term contracts if a skill set is not required for that longer time which was not the case earlier even if you don't need someone once you hire they used to continue uh, prior to covid now i think uh, people will probably focus on okay this is what i need for this length and let me hire that 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 kind of thing um another trend that i see especially myanmar i'm talking about which is going to pick up is or remote onboarding the onboarding uh, and activities right now are very much in person that will change as far as i know uh, on the remote onboarding will be very much part of myanmar trend and then most of the organizations are now taken by a uh, young generation older generations retiring and they understand the importance of diversity equity and inclusion of the people so i feel that dei will play much bigger role in coming days and automation Uh, so if you look for a bigger perspective what are we trying to achieve in next two decade i feel that automation will be at the center of your uh, daily talk on hr industry actually nothing <laughs> you have everything in place if you have a computer with browser if you have a mobile with mobile app you can start my solution right away at the minimum investment maximum automation that we can provide right now you don't need to be ready with anything all that we want to implement is understand your process add that to our customization engine system will be customized for you and it start working so let's say if you are 100 people company we might take two day for that that's it third day you will start using it but we need your data apart from that nothing else is really required everything is in built
Okay, so I think that's not a straight answer to give first of all. <laughs> it's difficult, but I'll try to give you one example of it. Um, let's say you have a project del delivery by month end. Anything that you manufacture or anything you do, every company has that kind of thing. So we, we know that around delivery, a uh, system will be tight, there, the resources will be scar and everybody need to put a little bit extra to achieve it because every project is little bit more than we think as a planning management. So now imagine that 30th is your delivery date and there is a group of team or employees within the team who those who are responsible for delivery coming bit early before de before two three days of the delivery coming bit early taking less breaks because we also record breaks sometime if you have a separate, separate cafeteria coming early taking less breaks going late now projects get delivered or not is a different story because project might change but what system will tell you is okay these people are responsible people on what basis on the basis that the considering the delivery line they came early to office nobody asked them and there are many more uh, members in the team they didn't come but few people came so what system will prioritize for you is we don't make a decision for you what we will give you as a data is okay during the crucial time of delivery these people are good members and if it's a team manager doing that then you have a very good manager for future that is how a subjective HR got converted to objective data driven decision from our software. So key takeaway would be sooner or later you will need this from us or someone it's up to you. When you are making a HR system related decision don't think that what you have in hand because most of the implementation and understanding of the system will take few months usability and you uh, know the actual impact of system into, into business will be visible after two years so for all of my hr friends those who are looking out there they should understand that whatever you are uh, choosing for your organization has to be futuristic and second thing is you have to see the convenience. So when I say convenience is right now, if you see Myanmar and mostly the entire world, there is a, a data sourcing companies like a job portal where resumes are stored. They are selling on their own basis. There is a recruitment companies. There are so many recruitment companies. Those will recruit for you on their own payment basis. And then there is employee management company. So, Actually, the unfortunate is these three people are not talking to each other. So you as a key takeaway from our system is as a, as a HR of the company, you have to find a system who is talking to all three. In Myanmar, QHRM is the right now only system who has all three components within and talking to each other. And uh, just uh, around the horizon, we have uh, some new initiative coming, which is going to be a st standalone job portal that job portal is going to connect to my QHRM seamlessly. On top of that, it is a pain to implement HR system because you really need to think through your policies, digitize them and then start using them, make your people use, use it. If you change that in between you know, after a year or two, the pain is again, you have to do redo again with new system. So, while choosing HR system, take a trial. We provide, if you need, we'll give you extended trial. Um, of course, my competitors must be doing that. On the other hand, you also have to think about a financial perspective as a key takeaway. What is that I am investing and what is that I am getting in return? So this, the next statement that I am saying is debatable, but my, my data, strongly suggest that we provide very good ROI. One of my data analysts said that, sir, if, if somebody is using QHRM, there is one is to nine ROI. So you invest $1 with QHRM, I give you $9 return. What else you need? <laughs> yeah, that's it on the key takeaway. Thank you.